Because of how well duck pairs with fruit and sweet flavors, the savory aspect is often ignored. In this recipe, I'm introducing you to another one of my secret ingredients, powdered, dry, roasted plums that you can make yourself. In fact, you pretty much have to because I don't think anyone sells this stuff. The resulting combination with fried sage leaves, duck cracklings, and this great spice blend is packed with layers of flavor that keep you coming back for more. Yes, you can make this with chicken breasts, but it won't be as flavorful or as tender. I have talked about dry roasting your own peppers to make paprika and dried chili peppers in my videos before. The same basic technique here used on plums to produce dry roasted plums. Uh, these are not the same as prunes. Even though prunes are dried plums, dry roasted plums are an entirely different thing. Now I, I begin with um, this product which is already dried plums to begin with. They're not prunes, it says plums. They are plums. They're, they're freeze dried. But they're not completely dried. They're a little bit leathery and to get that last bit of leatheriness out of the, the plums takes several hours in the oven but once you do you have something that's that's really crisp and brittle and it doesn't taste like a plum exactly it doesn't taste like a prune it's its own thing and that's that's the beauty of it it's it's a brilliant ingredient and uh, you're going to grind these up in a spice mill just like you would with the peppers or anything else and then this is what you want to end up with, this, this uh, dried plum, roasted plum powder. Don't get this stuff wet. It turns into glue almost instantly. Now, there's no such thing as celery salt in Russia, or at least not that I've ever seen. But uh, we can get, <laughs> of all the funny things, dried celery root. <laughs> and uh, so I'm going to make my own celery salt here. You can, uh, you can use this if that's what you have, or you can get dried celery root and make it yourself. Okay, simple. Just mix these two together. Grind it up. I have a couple of duck breasts here that I've trimmed. Normally I would do the cross hatch on them in order to let the fat out, but in this case we're going to do things a little bit differently here because we're actually going to make crackling out of that fat and we're going to cook the meat separately. So, we're going to salt this. Of course, salt one side only. Only on the skin side. We've got a pan here that's already been heated to about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. About 100 degrees Celsius. And I've got the, the seasoning mix. What I did is I combined the, the dried plums with all of the other ingredients in a bottle and I just shook it around and onto the other side of the duck breasts. I'm going to sprinkle about half a teaspoon of this seasoning mix on each one. I'm going to try to make it even, but if it's a little bit uneven it won't matter in the end. Okay, heat is medium. We're going to begin cooking these. After a few minutes, you begin to accumulate, uh, you know, five or six minutes, you begin to accumulate a lot of fat in it. This should be drained off. And turn it back because it's going to have a hard time browning if you have uh, a lot of fat. It's swimming in. So, skin is like beige colored right now. Needs needs more cooking. And finally, these have swollen up and kind of like turned around. Okay, move them around a little bit here. Pick up some of the fat off the edge. And we're going to transfer them over to plate where we're going to let them rest. After you allow the duck breasts to come all the way down to room temperature, we're going to take a knife here and remove the skin. Now you're going to get a little bit of meat with it. That's okay. Don't struggle to get only skin. If there's a little bit of meat, 
that's going to be good. That'll be part of the flavor for this. And these, these are the pieces that you want. You want two like this. Now, the duck breast, the rest of the duck breast can go to a container. You know, we could, we can actually store this to the next day now. These are cooked enough. They're not going to spoil. Uh, or you can just put them aside and, and use them later on. I'm actually going to finish this tomorrow. So what I got here is a, a nonstick can that I just put enough water into the bottom of in order to uh, basically cover it. And I've got the, some of the duck skin I cut into strips and I'm putting it fat side down, skin side up in the pan. Turn the heat on. Uh, medium five right now. And the idea is that this will gradually render fat out of there and the whole thing will fry in its own fat. But you know, this is a long slow process. It will not happen quickly. Don't crank up the heat and try to make it happen in a hurry. This is what it looks like after 10 minutes. Just to show you how slow this is going. Here we have what it looks like after about 25 minutes. Now I'm going to turn it over. Finish it on the other side. Now I turned the pieces over. What I'm going to do to finish it up, I'm putting a heavy pan filled with water down on top of it. Then after about 15 minutes of it sitting like that, I'm going to take it out, salt it heavily, and then we have our pieces that we can use in the garnish. So I have our mise en place. I've got the beans as about 220 grams of beans. Uh, you can make it a little bit different. These are nice giant beans, um, actually from France, but uh, you know you can use smaller white beans. This looks prettier on the plate. Looks better. Um, I've got the fat that was saved from cooking the duck breasts. Now I'm only going to use half of that here because I'm going to do one duck breast. If I was doing both of them, then I would I would use all the fat. Um, this is uh, the clove of garlic, and that's the shallot that's minced. All right, the pan is warm, but it's not hot yet. I'm going to add about half of this duck fat. It's a little bit more than duck fat. And uh, the shallot and the garlic, we're going to begin sweating these. Yeah, well, this is going on. We're going to cut the duck. As you can see, it's quite pink in the middle. I'm going to cut the duck into cubes. Now, we add a teaspoon of that seasoning mix, the same seasoning mix as before. This, make sure this is well coated. Now we'll turn our attention back to that pan with the uh, shallots and the garlic. Okay, we're just starting to see some color on the shallots now. And the smell of the garlic is not nearly as strong. So now I'm going to add those beans in, and I'm going to increase the heat up to about seven and a half out of ten. I'm going to get some flavor on these beans by cooking them at a high temperature. Yeah. You start to see some color on the beans themselves, and you start to hear a little bit of popping. You're getting real close. Okay, this is this is pretty good. You hear that popping? The beans are actually jumping. Now we're going to add that duck in, and a couple tablespoons of chopped scallions. And now I'm going to kill the heat. I'm going to use the residual heat in here to finish cooking the duck and combine it with the beans. Okay, this is pretty good. Now I'm going to actually put a lid on this. There's no heat. There's no heat on the burner. In a deep fryer, or in this case, because I'm not in a restaurant, we've got a pot with some oil in it, and I'm going to deep fry a few sage leaves. If 
when you uh, take the sage leaves out, leaves out, <laughs> if they're not crisp, it's because your oil wasn't hot enough. You need it to be quite hot, about 180, 190 Celsius. When they uh, they stop fizzing, they're done. By now, the duck and the beans are finished. You have to taste it um, and see if it needs more salt. It needs a little bit more salt in this case. If you like my videos, look for my cookbook, now available through Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and other internet bookseller sites. Also look for my cocktail book, Cocktails of the South Pacific and Beyond, Advanced Mixology, available through Amazon online.